Welcome to Generations Church 1030 a.m. service. I'm glad to see everyone here this morning. Isn't God good? Yeah. Say amen if you agree. God is so faithful. Lord God, we just lift up this time right now. Holy Spirit, just have your way. Thank you for always loving us, Lord, and allowing us to just come as we are to you, Lord God, with your arms open for us, Lord. Your mercies are new each day, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord. I call you faithful for the promises you've kept and every need you've met. Lord, I'm so grateful you are with me every step. And I never will forget Cause when I think of how you bless me How your hand has never let me go Oh, you've never let me go Cause you have been so 
sing, I call you Savior. I call you Savior for the blood that washed me clean, for the wrongs that you've redeemed. One more reason to believe Cause when I think of how you've blessed me How your hand has never let me go How oh, you've never let me go, no Cause you have been so good to me God, I can't believe how you love me What a friend so good to me, yeah. God, I can't believe how you love me. What a friend you have been. Yeah. Oh, what a friend you've been, Jesus. For every for your forgiveness for your forgiveness yeah for you never turn away I call you faithful and I just want it for your salvation for your salvation you paid the price I couldn't pay I call you faithful and I just want to thank you your voices so good to me yeah. God I can't believe how you love me what a friend you have been so good so good to me yeah. God I can't believe how you love me what a friend you, Lord. Just worship you, Lord God. Just dwell in his presence this morning. Lord, we come to you this morning, some of us with joyful hearts, some of us with heavy hearts, Lord. We bring all of our needs and all of our joys to your feet. We sing this song that you are our champion because you fight the battles for us, Lord. We surrender to your spirit this morning. The heavy burdens, the heavy thoughts, the things that oppress us throughout the week, throughout our days, Lord, that we would just focus on you and those things would just fall away. Thank you for choosing us, Lord, to share your word, to share your truth. tried so hard to see it it took me so long to believe it that you choose someone like me to carry your victory perfection could never earn it you give what we don't deserve it 
you take the broken things and raise them to glory you are my champion giants fall when you stand undefeated every battle serve the one who has conquered it all. Amen. Amen. We serve a God who is bigger than any problem that we face, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You guys can go ahead and take a seat. We can turn the lights on. Yes. Good morning. Come on, we can do better than that. Good morning. Good morning. We're the 1030 service. We should be wide awake, ready to go. Well, my name is Mark. This is Nick. We want to welcome you. If this is your first time to Generations Church, give you an extra special welcome and for everybody who is watching online yes we want to say good morning to you as well we know God is not confined to these four walls amen 
And when you came in today, you were handed a program. Inside that program, there's a couple of different things. Uh, the first is the connection card. If you want to pull that out and follow it along. On the front, there's some opportunities for you to fill out your information. If you are a first-time guest, feel free to fill out whatever you're comfortable with sharing. It's just a way for us to identify you. If you mark that box on there that says first-time guest, though, it's a way for us to identify you and provide you with a little bit more resources about the church and uh, what we believe and uh, getting you plugged in here at Generations. Um, also, if you are a first-time guest, if you go through those doors and to the right, there's a little small table with a bunch of little boxes. The little boxes there are a gift for you, just saying thank you so much for joining us here at Generations Church. Feel free to take one of those with you today before you leave. Also, on the back of that connection card, we have, yes, thank you for the motions. We have a uh, little spot for prayer requests. We have a whole team here at Generations Church that's praying over all of those prayer requests all throughout the week. Actually, we actually uh, really love praise reports, too. So if there's an answer to prayer in your life, which we get a lot of those here, feel free to put those on the connection card as well. At the top of that connection card are some spots for upcoming opportunities, Fall Fest, all these cool things that we're going to talk about in just a second. But at the end of service, go ahead and drop it in the offering bucket before you leave. We've got an upcoming opportunity today after service. We have Growth Track. If you are at all interested in seeing what it means to get a little more involved here or just learning about our heart for the ministry here at Generations Church, you can go ahead, check that off on the back of your connection card and attend Growth Track. And my favorite part about Growth Track, we always have lunch, so you won't be hungry. It actually really helps, too, if you uh, text that uh, number right there to RSVP for Growth Track, just so we make sure that we have enough lunch for everyone. So if you're interested in Growth Track, go ahead and text that. Also, uh, we have some upcoming fall life groups here at Generations Church. We don't think that church is just Sunday service. We think there's more to your experience with God by also having these awesome little life groups, these uh, basically little tiny Bible studies, but they're not just Bible studies. We have a basketball life group. We have a clean team life group. We have... Uh, prayer warriors out there, so it's a bunch of different little activities. Uh, we don't have our booth set up because a lot of them have actually started this week, um, but if you want to go online, you can check and see all the life groups that are posted there, and you can sign up online at Generations Church website. And I know it doesn't really feel like fall yet. I looked at my phone this morning, and it said high of 100 degrees, so I'm g I wore my flannel, though I'm trying to will fall into existence, and with fall, we have our fall fest coming up at the end of the month. Come on on uh, October 27th in the evening. And if you have not participated in this event before, what it is is we provide a safe place for the community, for families to bring their kids um, and have a fun time in a season of sometimes that it could look a little dark, right? As Christians can be a season where folks are scary things and, and you know darkness in our community. And we wanna be a light and expel that darkness in our community, provide a safe place for families and people in our community to come bring their kids. And of course, there'll be lots of candy, but my favorite part is we are also able to share the gospel with so many kids and their families. And so I encourage you, if you have not participated in the past, bring your family, kids, come. And also, if you would like to volunteer. And so we are still looking for folks to host trunks, and we are also uh, having our candy drive right now. So you see our candy receptacles or bins, whatever you want to call it. They are starting to get full, but we need more candy. So we want to make sure everybody who comes has a great, safe, and fun time. So I encourage you to get involved with that. All right. Also, that very same day on October 27th, that morning, that Sunday morning, Brian is also going to be giving an awesome word from God that day. So you don't want to miss that as well. So be sure to come up that morning. Awesome. If we spoke too fast or went over everything too fast, we can also follow us on social media and you can go ahead and stay connected there. We're still trying to talk Pastor Mark into getting a TikTok page. Um, he likes to dance. You know, he's very energetic up here when he's speaking. I said, that'll be perfect. Get all those TikTok views. So maybe one day. Kids, keep pressuring him. We're going to run out of space on that slide there if we have too many more. <laughs> all right, folks, we're going to take a three minute break. Uh, go ahead and refill those coffee cups. But be sure to say good morning to someone next to you. Thanks.
and I just recently caught the cookie joke in the movie. And if you're into computers, you understand. If not, I'll do a brief explanation, but that's it. And Neo enters back into the computer program, and before he goes any further in the movie, he's offered a cookie and had to accept a cookie. Just like how many times have you been to a website and you couldn't move forward on a website until it tells you or asks you to accept the cookies? Well, we can't move forward with this message until you accept a cookie. The difference here is these cookies I made for you. You can see it, you can feel it, and you can enjoy this one. You know where it's going, right? Right to the hips. <laughs> Let me take the, Oh, there you guys are. Let me switch over there so I can see you guys, right? Spoiler alert. Like I said, this movie was in 1999. If you haven't seen it yet, I have no problem. I do not feel guilty for ruining any of it for you. So that's, there it is. Recap. The story follows Thomas Anderson, a computer programmer, also known as Neo, who is drawn into a mysterious world of rebels fighting against the machine overlords. He learned that the world I skipped something. I'm like, where did that part go? Where did that go? Because I, I skipped the part to tell you that, that they were all enslaved by AIs, right? By the artificial intelligence. And so they're drawn into a world of rebel fighters against the machine overlords. He learns that the world he perceives is a false reality designed to control and harvest humans for energy. With the help of a rebel leader named Morpheus and his crew, Neo must decide whether to embrace his destiny as the one and liberate humanity from the matrix. In this movie, I see mankind unaware how lost they are, even born into bondage, and that a group of people who know the difference has made it their lives work to reach these lost people to separate the lost people from the way they live and to introduce them to the truth. And 1 Peter 2.9 says, but as you are not like that, for you're a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. We are transformed to be like Christ, and called to reach the, re the lost. What did I say? We're trans. Yeah, yeah. We're transformed. Sorry about that. My brain jumped ahead of itself sometimes. I got to reel it back in, right? Let's pray about that right now. Heavenly Father, we just come before you, Lord, and we ask for your anointing over this time that we spend together. We ask, Lord, that it's your words that flow through me, Lord, and it's not my words, Lord, that uh, you touch people's hearts, you touch their lives, Father God. Ultimately, we just want to share the truth, Father God, and nothing else, Lord, and we just thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first clip we're about to watch takes place after Neo has had an encounter with the agents and with Trinity. The agents are part of a computer program that stops anyone who becomes aware that everything is just assimilation. And Trinity, one of the rebels' job is to free Neo. She brings him to meet Morpheus to take him out of the simulation. Morpheus, it's an honor. No, the honor is mine. Please, come, sit.
That's how we are as Christians, right? Yeah, like, what? Huh? We, we just want to offer the truth. We want to offer the truth to those who don't know it. Sometimes other, some of us that do know it need the truth again. That's another message for another time. <laughs> there is much to take away from this clip. I at first see someone making a decision to accept Christ. But then I take another look at this, and I take a look at it from the view of Morpheus. I see somebody who knows something better than the current living. Someone who has already experienced freedom from bondage. The freedom from the things of this world and is extending it to other people. Matthew 4.19 says, And he said to them, Follow me as disciples, accepting me as your master in teaching and walking the same path of life that I walk, and I will make you fishers of men. I see there in Scripture that as we follow Christ and Christ teaches us to be like him, that we take that knowledge that Christ instills in us and we share it with others. It's like, it's, it's that revolving cycle, like the recycle arrows pointing to each other, right? Because as we come to, to Christ and we know Christ, we learn about Christ and we point others to Christ. And then they go out and they do it all over again. And again. We extend what we know in Christ to people who need to know Christ. I see that as a life of a Christian. It is our job to seek out people in the world and bring them to Christ. It's not our job to fix them, but to point them to the truth, to the light, to freedom. I like to say that as fishers of men, it's our job to catch them. It's his job to clean them. We bring them to Christ and allow the Lord to change their lives. Who would not be here right now if we waited till we were perfect to walk in the doors? We come in with our baggage. We come in with everything that we have, the hurt and the heartache of the world, and we let Christ clean us. But we don't wait. We bring it as it is. Scripture says that God wants a contrite heart. Psalms 51, 17 states that the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. We bring our hearts and broken spirits to God so that he can work on us. Christ heals our hearts and fills them with his desires. He fixes our broken spirit with the Holy Spirit. Although some things take time to change because there's a process of sanctification, but when we come to the Lord, when we come to Jesus, we are seen holy in the eyes of God. And we see this in Scripture where it says, Isaiah 118, Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be, may be red like crimson, they shall be like wool. Like, I even got to hear story time. You guys remember that in, in school they'd be like, story time and everyone get up on the carpet and pull forward and teach you bring out the book, right? Story time, you guys. I got one for you. Right? This, this got me thinking about how white is snow. Now you're thinking about that too. How white is snow? One of my oldest memories as a kid is from when I lived in South Dakota. I must have been about two years old. I don't think my little sister was born yet. And we're about two years apart. So somewhere right in there. I was at the window watching snowflakes hit the window. And in South Dakota, the snow's different. It's, uh, it's drier. It's almost like sawdust. And it just, you don't have to shovel your yard. You just wait for a, a good breeze. Like, your, your yard's full of snow, the wind blows, now the neighbor's yard's full of snow. And, that's, and so, like, I'm sitting in the windowsill, and I'm looking at snowflakes, and I'm looking for two matching snowflakes. And I'm doing this, and I can remember this at such a young age, 
because my mom was telling my sisters, my older sisters, no two snowflakes look alike. And I, I'm like, that's another message because no two Christians should be alike, but we should be alike in Christ. We come with all our differences. We come with who we are. And then we come together, and in Christ we become one. But I look at these, these snowflakes, and they weren't white. They were translucent. They were clear. What makes them look white is the reflection of light passing through them. When they get in a pile, they're blinding. Have you ever been snowboarding or skiing or just playing sledding in the snow? And if you don't put sunblock on, you can get sunburned. And if you've got to wear sunglasses, otherwise you get snow blind. Snow can reflect up to 90% of the sun's UV rays. Like the snow, when we come to Christ, we become translucent, allowing Christ to shine through us. We're washed as white as snow. I, I, this was like one of those download moments. We're washed as white as snow. We become clear as those snowflakes are, as clear as that snow. But when people look upon us, they see the brilliance, the radiance, the brightness. They see the sun through us. And I'm not talking the S-U-N. They see Christ shining through us. And that's how we become as white as snow. We should be so brilliant, so bright, that people are like, oh my gosh, what do you guys got? It says Moses came down off the mountain with such a radiance they had to veil his face. Because he spent time with God. God wants us just as we are. We allow him to transform our thoughts and our actions so that we can live a different life, one that glorifies him. In the movie, since Neo woke up and had been removed from the computer program, he, must, he, must, he had to have his body rebuilt or built up because he had never used it before. He, didn't, he couldn't walk. He couldn't see. He couldn't, never spoke before, never swam, nothing. Because everything was just in his mind, in his thoughts. It was just assimilation. The clip we're about to watch is right after 10 hours of transformation and downloading uh, information into his mind. And the information they were downloading to his mind through, the, through using computer was to teach in the combat against the Matrix. Neo is showing Morpheus some of what he has learned.
come on, what happens? Uh, that just makes me think that's what we're trying to do. We're just trying to free your mind, right? Like, do you need your mind freed? I don't know. That's between you and God. Uh, what things holding on to your life? What things where you're at in life? Is everybody in here a believer? Or are you a first-time visitor? I don't know. I mean, I know some people in here. But at that point, like, we just... We just want to share the gospel of Christ to you. We just want to help you free your mind from the burdens of this world, of the things of this world, the things that hold you back, fear, anxiety, things that are chains that have been, some of them are generational chains that need to be broken. And we just want to free that. And, and, and it's our heart here at Generation Church is to see people go, come to Christ. And so I like that. And, he, and, and that's me. That's me even in the morning, you know. <coughs> All right, free my, free my mind. Because cause there's still things that got me. And I'm like, I know, I know you're there, Lord, but even though this is a short clip, I see a few things. I see Morpheus challenging Neo to let go of his previous way of thinking. That he has the freedom to do more now since he is not part of the matrix any longer. The training that he is going through is part to show him that even though he can be in the matrix, he is not part of it. And that he now has freedom to be something different. Freedom to be something more. This is much of how we are once we come to the Lord. We are not part of this world, although that we live here for now. We are not confined to the ways of this world. We are set apart that we are now holy and righteous in the eyes of God through Jesus. We live differently. We act differently. We think differently as Christians. We can get rid of all the doubt, fear, and anxiety, whatever your burden is, whatever our burdens are, and exchange it for the likeness of God. 2 Corinthians 10.5, we demolish everything arguments and every pretense that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. The word of God is the only standard for life and truth. Amen. I don't want to sound like a cliche or a ringing gong in one ear and out the next. But thinking of how to free our minds and allow Christ to take over. How do we take every thought captive? And we read it in Scripture, and Scripture says it, and you're like, all right, I'll do it. But no, really, how do you do it? Because it's not that, that simple. If I just had to read the Bible once and I'd be a perfect Christian, then, then life would be great, right? But I have to learn ways to activate these, learn ways to implement them completely in my life. I need to ask God to help me every day. I'm a firm believer that there must be some weapons or tools in our tool belt. Weapons in our tool belt. Tool. Holster. I almost put a, almost wore like a holster with it too for the movie, but I was like, eh, maybe not. But we need weapons to fight against thoughts. The weapons that I'm speaking about are the power of prayer in the word of God. And I know we've said that and said that, but I mean, you're in church, you're going to hear that. It's hard to say a prayer or speak with God if you're not pursuing a relationship with God. It's hard to be in, in a situation or have thoughts that are not of God and combat against them if you're not used to talking to God. We practice this by dedicating time to sp in spending with God in prayer and word. As we draw closer to God, speaking his word and praying becomes a part of our lives. The last clip that we will listen to is after Neo 
has really started to believe. And his mind is now open. He sees the matrix for what it is and wants to free other people. I like at the end there that he's going to show him a world of the impossible. And I'd like to also describe my God, our God that we serve, as the God of the impossible. And I'm like, what does that mean? Is things that are impossible in my life are possible for him. So he takes those things in our lives and he makes them happen. Things that you never thought could happen. I want to, this isn't in my notes, I'm off, I'm, I'm off, but... I like to say, close your eyes. You don't have to do it here. You, know, you don't, might not want somebody watching you do this, but close your eyes and think of the best life here on earth that you could have. Like imagine, like go extreme. What kind of car, what size of house? What's your bank statement look like? Are you working, not working? Like imagine the best you possibly can and that's nothing to what God has for you. Because it says his ways are better than our ways. It says his thoughts are better than, his, than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Anything good you could think of your, for yourself, God has something better. I'm not talking about willing a Ferrari into your driveway. But I am talking about the goodness of God and the way your life will be blessed with walking with God. We hear Neil letting the Matrix know that he is working for humankind now and that he is letting the computer program know that his objective is now to set people free. Matthew 28, 19 and 20, and this is probably, are you supposed to have a favorite verse in the Bible? I mean, cover, cover to cover, it's all the word of God and we believe it. Cover to cover, word every word in there. Do you, are you supposed to have a favorite one? I mean, I have a hard time when I read like chapter Matthew one one when it's and begot and begot and begot and he's going through some names, right? Or reading through like numbers or reading through anything that has all the names lined up. But this one is is if I have a favorite verse, it's this one. It's the Great Commission. Matthew 28, 19 through 20 says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Holy Spirit, or the Son, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the ages. End of the age. <laughs> we are to seek out and guide people to Christ. Now that we've had our eyes open, that we're Christians, that we've accepted Christ in our lives, and we have been freed from our chains and bondage. As we grow in Christ, it is our duty as Christians to share our faith in Jesus with the rest of the world, leading the lost to God. I don't think I can express it better the way the last verse does, but I read the... I read that Christ is telling us to reach the lost, to baptize them and teach them his commands. So what does that look like? We teach the lost. When we reach the lost when we share about Christ with others. We had just recently had a baptismal day. If you were taking part in that, then you know what it looks like. 
the symbolism of dying to ourselves in the water and coming up new in Christ. This is an outward act to express what God has done in your life. Then there is teaching one another. Anyone who's sat in a classroom knows what teaching looks like. But what does this look like for us? We share the gospel of Christ and then invite that person or people I like people better because you share that with more, right? To accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, encourage those individuals to call out to the Lord in prayer. Then offer a time of baptismal, which we have another baptismal day on the calendar coming up soon. Then there is teaching, which comes from sharing lives with each other. Here at Generations Church, we provide several opportunities. Our church service is one way to learn and joining a life group is another. If you're not part of the dream team, then you're not getting the fullness of what we offer here at Generations Church. Let me explain this to you. Story time. Come up to the carpet again, you guys. There's a lady who goes to Generations Church and she shared how serving in the church has added to her life. She had joined the kids' ministry as one of the teachers because she felt God calling her to do it. She didn't want to do it and tried to back out a few times. But God was not taking no for an answer, and neither was Johnette. <laughs> After spending some time in the kids' ministry, her heart towards kids started to change. Instead of wanting the kids in the neighborhood to quiet down when she was at home she started bringing them treats she then got a job offer working as a teacher what I see here is that as she served the Lord in church here in church at Generations Church God developed something inside of her that would bless her and glorify her at the same time I also encourage you to join a life group we then start to spend time together outside of Sunday. We eat together. We play together. We laugh together and cry. It was in life group that I heard this lady's testimony of serving in the church and teaching. I've witnessed the power of engaging with Christ through the avenues that are provided right here. Allow Christ to become the director of your movie, the story of you. I'll say a prayer as we get ready to take the offering. Heavenly Father, we just thank you this morning, Father God. We come before you and just ask, Lord, that if anyone in here doesn't know Christ, that they that they come to you, Father God. That's our mission. That's our goal. That's our, our heart is to be like you and you reach the lost, Father. So I just pray for your move in this place, Father God. And I ain't talking about a building. I'm talking about hearts, Father. And we just thank you and we love you. Amen. We appreciate you for Sean. So funny, I, I, ushers, you guys can come and thank you, brothers, all brothers this morning. Yes, no sisters, okay. Uh, I got invited to a like a college college group Bible study. I hadn't gone to college, but I was a young adult, so I got invited one morning. Like I was a new Christian. And so they invited me to this group. And so we broke into small groups and they were talking about, oh, you know, what does it mean to live for God and this and that? And, and I was like, well, it's letting go of, you know, everything, letting go of everything. Just everything you have is from God. Everything, I was a new Christian. And, and the others in the group were just like, kind of like listening. And then afterwards, someone said, man, I just really loved your testimony of how, you know, living for God is just letting, like Neo 
is trying to let go, let go, let go. But I, I was like, you don't understand. I mean, when I let go of everything, I was holding all the wrong things. <laughs> it was easy for me to let go of the pain, the misery, the addiction. Come on, somebody. It was easy for me to let go of that. Let go. I mean, these things, I was like holding rattlesnakes. Let go, you know. It was a joy to let go of the things in my life. 33 years later, 33 years in Christ later, I've had to let go of a lot of things through the years, attitudes, mindsets, unforgiveness. Come on, in 33 years of being a Christian, and, and we're not, I don't want you, no one here wants anyone to think that it's just so easy to just let go. I mean, for me, it was easy, you know, because those things were all, but sometimes it's hard to let go of things. And I want to recognize that this morning because he is asking you to let go. The Lord is asking you to let go. Let him, let him have control of all the areas. Come on, not just some areas. It's an old saying, but if he isn't Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. I mean, it's just a saying, but it kind of rings true, doesn't it? Let go. We have to let go. So Sean prayed. I'm just going to pray real quick, if you guys would, with me. Father, I thank you that you're here right now in this moment. And if there are people in this room that need to let go, some of us need to just let go of some things we know. We're in a relationship with you. You're dealing with us in other areas. But there's some people that might be in here that are here today. And this idea of faith and living for you is a new thing to them. But God, the best thing we can do is let go of being in control of our life. And the number one that way that that happens is to ask you to take control of our lives. And you answered that prayer for me 33 years ago. It was almost my exact words. Please take control of my life. In that, I was confessing my ability to not save myself. Yes, I've learned to articulate that more theologically through the years. But at the end of the day, it's me letting go of my life and letting you in. If you're here this morning, you want to do that. It's as simple as saying, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. I want to live for you. I'm letting go of the wheel, letting you take control. God is not the co-pilot. God is the pilot, friend. <laughs> so, Lord, we give you our lives today. For some of us, for the first time, other ones, just fresh, a refreshing, a renewing of that commitment to let you be in control of our relationships, of our life, of our mind, the things we think, Lord. Let go and we look to you to be the one to reveal ultimate truth to us. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Hey, if you prayed that with me today for the first time or if you'd like me to, I want to send you something. Just put it on your connection card. I think it says, taking my next steps with God. Check it off. I'll send you a couple things. Uh, at the beginning of the week that I think will strengthen your walk with God. Um, ushers, we're going to receive this morning's offering. This is an act of worship. So, Father, we come to you today with our gifts. It's not just arbitrarily giving money, but it's an act of worship. Giving has always been an act of worship. It might feel like just dropping something in the bucket, but come on, it's an act of worship. So we give with our heart this morning. We give cheerfully and liberally to the work of your kingdom in Jesus name. Amen. Go right ahead. Hey guys, you might have noticed this morning that we're in a series called At the Movies. If you come next week and we're not showing a movie, we don't want you to be disappointed. Uh, but we're finishing that up this morning and then we have a couple weeks where we're going to be talking the next couple weeks a little mini series called Formed. What does it mean to be formed into the image of Jesus, right? Grow your hair long, put on a robe. No, that's not what we're talking about. And uh, Brian Cassidy that they mentioned is going to be speaking here on the 27th. He's got an incredible testimony. We've actually, he's in Arizona right now, and we've been texting back and forth. He's at church in Arizona this morning. But Brian Cassidy, evangelist, illusionist. So he'll be preaching in the morning, and then he'll be performing outside on the stage at Fall Fest on Sunday night. He has an incredible story. I'll let him share, you know, most of it, but... Um, pastored a great church in San Francisco for 17 years, lost his wife to an illness, and it blasted him right between the eyes. He went into a five-year funk, 
just decided his words to boycott life. Just wasn't going to live, wasn't going to live life. Horrible depression, debilitating depression, anyone. <laughs> and um, resurfaced through some friends. You know, I wanted to say this too. It was some friends that helped him kind of come back to life. And I'll let him share the rest of his story next week, whatever he decides to share. But, you know, you see in the movie here, Neo, he was alone. Got to do it. Got to do it. Guess what? That's the movie. In real life, you're not alone in Christ. Look around the room. There's lots of people that want to support you, and we want to support you. So it's such a joy to have everybody here this morning to see all the smiling faces. Hopefully you got some encouragement somehow. And uh, you're not alone. Just tell your neighbor you're not alone this morning. Tell them you're not alone. You're not alone. Christianity, Christianity is not like golf. It's a team sport, right? I know they have golf teams, but yeah, you have other people to lock arms with you. And Sean uh, did his great infomercial at the end there about life groups and that type of thing. So be courageous, get involved. You can find everything that you need to know about what's going on here weekly, monthly, and so on on our website. You can follow us on Instagram too. Follow me on Instagram, Pastor Mark. Come on. I'm posting more than my sushi pictures. I'm posting, you know, some inspiring stuff too. So, God, I pray that you dismiss us from this place. You guys have a great afternoon. We'll see you next week or at a live.